Hello, this is a little video about uh, uh, PyBullet, uh, how to model a sort of dog robot in uh, PyBullet. I liked very much the videos of James Bruton on his uh, development of a robot dog, so I thought let's try and do uh, some modeling in, uh, in PyBullet with Python. So here's a piece of code, and uh, to give you an appetite, let's first run it and uh, see what it gives. So here you see a little robot uh, walking, you see that it has uh, similar joints to the open dog, uh, three, three joints per leg. Well, it can walk like forward and then I can make it turn on its, uh, on its place. So I can also uh, learn to walk the other way. It can walk backwards also. And uh, I uh, put a few keys to be able to rotate the camera. So basically what I can do is I can make it rotate, walk to that little ramp that I put there to, uh, to test it on. So uh, let's walk forward now. Uh, it works, uh, it has uh, cycles of four. four set, each for all the four legs do a, uh, do a movement and then I can change the direction. So it's not completely dynamic everywhere. So we're moving a little bit towards the ramp now. Let's rotate a little bit and then back forward. And then we are going to move up the ramp a little bit. Let's see. So uh, I can also move a little bit upward to see how it's, how it's going. And we can see from the side how it, how it walks. So uh, as it goes up the ramp, you will see it will have some difficulty and sometimes it's, it falls over. I think uh, now I'm, I'm approaching at an angle, so it might be quite difficult. Let me try and put it a little bit more straight, because as the robot has quite a high mass, which is quite yeah, quite a high mass, it has a risk of falling over. You see, it also slips a bit and so on. So this ramp, which is reasonably steep, is not uh, its favorite thing. So uh, yeah, let's just let it fall over and then we can have a look a little bit at how the feet move so what you see is all the feet move all the time basically it moves one foot forward uh, and while doing that it makes sure that the center of mass of the center uh, of the robot is a little bit located towards the other three feet okay so that is that's that let's end it here now we can go a little bit into the code. So, uh, so PyBullet is very nice, uh, nice work. Uh, who made it? Uh, Cheerio. Uh, very good, uh, very good job. So basically, uh, you you get the library, you you connect and uh, you create a plane, uh, uh, and then you start making a robot which has uh, several elements like body, uh, an extra block for an extra weight and all these little joints which are for the for a roll joint, the hip, the knee and the foot. The foot is, a, is more like a sphere and the others are more like boxes with the different sizes here. And then basically the dog robot uh, is basically the body with all the other uh, elements attached to it. Uh, so there are in total uh, the, the body plus uh, plus 17 links. So uh, for each of these links, uh, you need to define the mass. Uh, the shape is basically the same as, as this uh, shape. Uh, the visual shape is the same as the, the, the physical shape. Uh, you need to say which shape is, is, is uh, connected to which index. You need to give them, a, 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 you need to define where the joints are because every shape is connected to another shape through uh, link positions so the, uh, if you have an, an element which is linked to another element it has a position compared to the other element and it has an orientation compared to the element in my case all the orientations are are, 
or vertical in the, in the starting position. So then you can do some things with the, with the, the inertial frame position of the, each block. Then these indices are quite nice. They basically refer to uh, every link is connected to either the body or to a, a link that is connected to the body or to a link that's connected to a link to the body and so forth and so forth. And then for each joint between two links, uh, you need to in the specify if it's a revolute or prismatic. And then there is uh, the axis of a revolution uh, that you need to specify or uh, the axis of uh, prismatic movement. Uh, you specify the, the position where you where you have your your base body, and then here you create the whole thing. Uh, after that, uh, I needed to set some uh, links to a motorized links with some quite high force because my robot has been designed to be uh, like 20, 21 or twenty two kilos, and uh, if not, the default force on the on the joints is uh, makes that it can can basically uh, uh, fall down. Then you set the gravity, etc. Okay, so uh, this is something that we uh, can do. So if you basically stop here and you just uh, let time pass by like 10 seconds and then you disconnect, then we get the following uh, thing. So let's see if I can capture this again. Okay. Uh, I think I'm too late for this. this uh, this uh, well we set some scenery like this inclined plane and then we can set some additional friction and so forth and so forth uh, I use some functions to do the sort of inverse uh, kinematics for example this is a function if I know where is the XYZ of my hip and I know where the XYZ of my foot needs to be I, it calculates three angles alpha beta and gamma for the roll joint the hip joint and the uh, so basically this is a bit similar to what, what uh, James was working out on paper for one or two joints and so on. This is for, for three joints, which is not that difficult actually. And then uh, some function that sets all the joints to the, to the position I want based on the x, y, z of, of the four legs and, uh, and the speed at which I want to change something. Okay, what else do I have? Okay, there's a lot of rotations, and for rotations, it's nice to uh, use a rotation uh, matrix. This is a rotation matrix just around one, uh, one around one uh, jaw angle. Uh, the the thing is, you can have a, a reference frame for the robot and a reference frame for the world. And if you have something in robot coordinates, you can transform it with the, with this rotation matrix to world coordinates. Uh, you need to do a, basically a rotation and a translation usually. And that makes it very handy to, for example, specify the position, the rela with respect to the uh, to the robot coordinates, to the position of the feet, and then transform them to the world coordinates. Or when you have them in world coordinates and you want to, like, see what it needs to be in robot coordinates, you do the other way around, which is basically the the uh, the, the transpose of the rotation matrix. So that's something. Uh, there's a little thing it uses actually quaternions for orientation. Uh, but there's a nice function can turn into Euler in the opposite way around that can can be used if you are uh, uh, if you want to specify angles in Euler angles. Uh, so things go on. I tried to comment uh, quite nicely. Uh, it's still a very basic thing. So here's then the, the main loop. So there are keys. Uh, these keys are for say, the orienting the camera. And so what I want, I pitch and yaw for the camera, etc. And these. Uh, are for if I want to move forward, uh, backward, right or left and uh, then as it moves it has a, a sequence first it moves for example like 1, then like 0, then like 2, then like 3 or the other way around depending on what is most convenient uh, yeah there's a lot to say uh, I mean I need to calculate where the, the, the body needs to go if I move one leg I want the body to move basically uh, towards the, the center of gravity of the other uh, three feet that are standing put. Uh, again, 
more rotation matrices and so on. This is basically code you'd have to probably look through and see what it does, play with it, and then uh, you can have this robot working. So let's try, try if I can if I can rerun it. starts with the front right foot whereas if I do a cycle and I move left, it starts with the front left foot to basically open up the legs instead of closing them uh, on, the, on the rotation so again uh, you can drive around uh, see how it looks from the top and then we walk for example backwards in the next cycle and uh, you can see a little bit and below how it sets the steps and moving backward let's let's rotate a bit more yeah so uh, that's basically how it works okay thanks if you watched thanks for watching <laughs>